Good morning. Welcome to Monday Meditations. We're glad you're with us today. We have uh, been enjoying going through the Gospel of Mark, looking at snapshots of the servant of God. And uh, as we're looking at these snapshots of the Lord Jesus Christ as that perfect servant of God, we've arrived here at chapter 4. And at chapter 4, we find the Lord Jesus telling a story, a parable. A parable is a earthly story with a heavenly meaning. And so we find the Lord Jesus telling this, this story, this parable, and he, it's the parable of the sower. Now, we often call it the parable of the sower, and I want to suggest to us that, that I, I refer to this as the parable of the soils because there's four types of soils that are mentioned, and that's really the focal point of this. The sower is the Lord Jesus Christ. The seed that he's sowing is the Word of God, and the soil is the heart of man, and there's four different types of soil that's mentioned. And the real emphasis here is on, in the heart of man, that the, how the heart of man receives the word of God. And there's four different uh, hearts and four different receptions of the word of God. And, and we're going to look at that. But just before we, we do, we want to see uh, in this chapter, um, I want to just divide it up for us in the first 20 verses, uh, chapter 4. Mark chapter 4, verses 1 to 20, and the first two verses we want to call the setting, the setting of our parable. And, and we see that setting in verse 1 particularly. And then in chapter verse 2 to 9, we see the story itself. The Lord Jesus tells this earthly story, and he brings alongside, and that's the idea of a parable, to bring parallel, to bring the the story the heavenly meaning of it alongside then to this earthly story. And then there's the secret of it in verse 10 to 12. And he reveals the secret and he re reveals that to his own, we'll see. And then he tells the significance of it where he interprets uh, the parable himself. And he tells the disciples what, that, what the meaning of that parable is. And that's the significance. But let's go back to the setting. When we look at the setting, we find in verse 1, and again, he began to teach by the sea. And a great multitude was gathered to him so that he got into the boat and sat in it and on the sea, and the whole multitude was on the land facing the sea. Then, verse 2, then he taught them many things by parables, and said to them in his teaching. And I'll just stop there for a moment. I want to emphasize the greatness of the Lord Jesus Christ as the greatest teacher that ever taught uh, the word of God or anything else. The Lord Jesus Christ was indeed the greatest teacher. And we find him here. And he put a premium on teaching the word of God. And there was the sensational things such as uh, uh, the healings and the miracles and, and the wonders and the signs that took place. But the Lord Jesus really put an emphasis on the scriptures and on the rightly dividing the scriptures and the teaching the word of God in such a way. Remember back in chapter 1, I just mentioned this quickly, but in chapter 1, around verse 32 to, to um, about 30. Four or so, we find that the Lord Jesus was had had been performing miracles. He had been healing people. He had been making the lame whole. And we find that the disciples come to him, uh, finding him praying early in the morning in a solitary place. And they said, "Well, many people are looking for you. There are so many people that want to be healed, and they're looking for you." And what did the Lord Jesus say? The Lord Jesus didn't succumb to that popularity. What the Lord Jesus said was. We have to go to the next towns because there I must teach. I must preach also. And you know, that really puts the premium on the word of God, on the preaching of the word of God. And, uh, and, and in these last days that we live in, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4 would remind us that there are going to be people who don't want to hear the word, but we must preach the word anyway. 
And and this is what we find the Lord Jesus doing. And secondly, what's striking in this verse is that the multitude came upon him. You know, when we think about this multitude, wherever the Lord Jesus went, the multitudes followed him. In chapter 1, we found that the, there was a multitude. The whole city came to him in chapter 1, verse 33. And then chapter 2, we find that in the house, there was no room for anybody else to come. They had to take the roof off in order to drop people in. And, and uh, so we find the multitude again. Chapter 3, we find the multitude, verses 7 and 8 and 9. We find the multitude, great multitude, it says. Now here in chapter 4 again. The great multitude, the multitude had backed the Lord Jesus up to the sea and now he's in a boat and he's teaching. He sat down in the boat and he's teaching from the boat out toward the, the land and, uh, and the multitude is listening. And, and that's the setting. Now, when we think of the story itself, the Lord Jesus tells the story of the man who went out into the field and he's sowing seed. And they would have a bag and they would take the seed that's in the bag and they would just spread it around. And the seed falls on four different types of ground. And without uh, going into too much detail here, I want to tell us the, the ground in which it falls on and what that ground represents. And first of all, let me just point out that the seed, according to verse 14 of our chapter, the sower sows the word. The seed is the word of God. The sower is the Lord Jesus. The seed is the word of God. And there are four types of soil that the word of God lands on the heart of men. Four types of heart that we have here. And, uh, and, and it's important for us to see that. And first of all, we see here that uh, in verse 4, that he goes out and he, see, uh, he sows the seed by the wayside and the birds of the air come and devour it. Now, that's in verse 4. But what we find, uh, that the wayside is the hard ground. It's a path that's been walked on and, and pressed down, and, and the seeds fall. There's no way for the seeds to penetrate into the ground. And it's hard soil. And it represents a hard heart that is calloused and, and that has no desire uh, to hear the word of God and its ears are closed to it and it rejects the word of God. And so we have this hard heart. And in verse 15, we, we see that the Lord Jesus describes that. These are the ones by the wayside where the word is sown. And when they hear, Satan comes and immediately takes it away, the word uh, that was sown in their hearts. And that's what the birds represent. Remember, Satan is the prince and the power of the air. And so we find that the birds represent uh, Satan. And that's what verse 15 tells us. And so the soil, is it's hard ground. And, uh, and so we find here that uh, in the next soil is shallow ground or shallow soil. And we find that in, in verse 5, some fell by the stony ground where it did not have much earth. So it had some earth. It didn't have much earth, but it had some earth. And the stones were there and immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth. And so what we find here is this, this stony ground, this rocky or stony ground um, represents for us a shallow soil. Look down, if you would, down to verse 16 and 17. These, likewise, are the ones sown on stony ground, who when they hear the word, immediately they receive it with gladness, and they have no root in themselves, and so endure only for a time. Afterward, when, when tribulation and persecution arises, for the word's sake, immediately they stumble. And so here we find that those, the seed falling on stony ground represents a heart that takes it in, but doesn't really, uh, uh, doesn't really make it its own. It, 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 it likes what it hears, but it, there's no possession there. There's, uh, there's just a, a profession maybe, 
but there's no possession. And, and so what we find is this shallow soil doesn't endure the conflict that comes from abiding by the word of God, by living out the word of God. It's shallow ground. And there are many who have professed to know the Lord Jesus Christ at one time or another. Uh, Judas is an example of that. He professed to know the Lord Jesus. He professed to be a disciple of the Lord Jesus. He followed the Lord Jesus for three years, but then he betrayed the Lord Jesus. So he was a professor, but not a possessor. And so we find him here, uh, represented here. And then the third type of soil is a thorny ground. Notice it says that Verse 7, some seed fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it and yielded no crop. And as we would drop down then uh, to verses 18 and 19, we see that uh, explained by the Lord Jesus. Now, these are those ones who, who sowed among thorns. They are the ones who hear the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the desires of other things enter and choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. So here we find that there are those who hear the word of God and, and they take it in, but the cares of this world choke it out. There's no lasting fruit. There's nothing there for the glory of God. There and, and this represents those that uh, have heard the word of God, but the, the cares of this world choke it out. Now, I would say that the first three soils, the first three hearts that are represented by those different types of soil, by the hard soil, the hard heart, by the uh, shallow soil, the shallow heart, uh, by the thorny ground, uh, the crowded out heart, these three, we would say, are unconverted, unconverted, unbelievers. They can be represented by believers in certain aspects, but really we would say that these three are char characteristically unbelievers. But then there's the last one. The last one we read in verse 8. But other seed fell on good ground and yielded a crop that sprang up and increased and produced some 30-fold, some 60-fold, and some 100-fold. Now, that's tremendous when we stop and think about this wonderful uh, expression that there is a heart that received the word of God and that there's fruit for the glory of God. And we want to we want that to be our lives. We want that to represent our lives. And what we see is this good soil, three types of good fruit, uh, some 30, some 60, some 100. And uh, if you have ears, he says to his disciples, he's speaking to his disciples, if you have ears to hear, uh, to, then, then hear it. Uh, and this idea of hearing is the idea of understanding the meaning and live it out. Live it out in your daily lives. What's interesting, there's 30, 60, and 100. What's interesting as we look at this, in, in, uh, when we compare it to Matthew's, um, Matthew's portion that describes this, Matthew starts with 100, goes to 60, and goes to 30. And, uh, and then Luke's gospel, it just simply there, it's, he just says 100%. And it's interesting, that striking to me, the difference. Mark is talking about the servant of God. Matthew is talking about the diminishing in the kingdom. And Luke is talking about the perfect man. And, uh, and, and so there it's just 100% in his sowing. But here there's this gradual uh, 30, 60, 100 and, uh, you know, there's going to be different aspects of our productivity in our lives for the glory of God. And this is what we want to work toward. We want to work toward producing fruit to the glory of God in our lives. And when we see this perfect servant of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, he, he, he lifts this veil 
And in here in verses 13 to 20, he lifts the veil and he really describes the significance of this story. And, and it's a gentle jab. He says, um, uh, do you not understand this parable? How then will you understand all parables? You see, this parable, and I'm just very quickly going through it, but this parable is so important. It is the master key that unlocks all the other parables in, in, uh, in, in, in many ways. And so we need to understand that the word of God, the seed is the word of God, the sower is the Lord Jesus Christ, and the soil are the four different types of hearts that the soil can land on today. So as you sow the seed of God's word as a believer, you realize that there are going to be some that receive it and there's going to be some that reject it. There's going to be some that receive it uh, temporarily and they like the idea, and, and but there's no lasting fruit. There are going to be some that receive it and the things of this earth will crowd it out. You know, what's encouraging is even the perfect sower, the Lord Jesus Christ, the perfect servant of God, he sowed the seed and it still landed on four different types of hearts. And I would say that as you sow the seed today and as you share the word of God today with others, may the Lord encourage you. We don't look for the 30, 60, and 100. That's what the Lord will produce. What we want to be is faithful in our sowing of the word of God and the sowing of the seed. So may the Lord encourage you today as you consider these things and may you go back over this portion and dig it out for yourself. And, and uh, there's so much more in the portion, but I want to just set before you uh, the perfect sower, the perfect servant, the Lord Jesus Christ.